All right, so I did look at what question I did last semester. So when I start, if that exact same question comes up again, I think there's like one in 10 chance, um, then I will just reset it somehow and redo. And if not, I will just uh, work through. Oh, let me set all this up. This, uh, 20 minutes is really a tight amount of time. I can't emphasize that long enough. Even I don't have, um, Let's see. Uh, even I don't have a luxury of wasting time once this starts. Uh, depending on what question I get, I might just have to use this space for scratch work and uh, and just uh, focus on getting the answers within the time limit first. So, okay, let me start. Yeah, I started recording. Okay. Sorry, I'm becoming paranoid. Uh, all right, so that is not the question I've gotten before, so I can just go ahead and do it. It says, consider a clay ball of mass hanging from the ceiling, right? Nicolette of mass block collides with a clay ball. The block sticks to the clay ball and they swing up together. Okay. Um, yeah, there's a picture here, so I will just leave that. B, it says, as the masses swing up, what is the tension in the string? Okay. So I'm thinking of a picture where I have some mass here and sorry. Um, mass here, it's a stuck to to M and there's a thing that's hanging here and there's some kind of tension in the string that I need to think about. Hmm. Now, I think it's useful to, to draw a free body diagram just to make sure I'm grounded correctly. So when I draw a free body diagram, um, so these two masses stuck together will have gravity acting on them, 3mg and tension. Now, uh, here's a place where people might make a mistake. If you think the acceleration here is zero after collision, when they are moving, um, when they are moving together at some speed of v, um, then this is not right, because if it's moving at some speed with this string, it's going to be undergoing circular motion, and circular motion means centripetal acceleration, v squared over r. So, so I, I hope so. Once you get that far, then um, you should have some sense of what solution steps to go through. So in order to find the tension, what you need is actually the speed. So I need to do the collision analysis first. Whenever you have things colliding, you are thinking through uh, what's conserved. And um, momentum is almost always conserved. And here, I think I can see that there's no significant external force during collision. And if they are um, sticking together, then it's not elastic collision. So kinetic energy won't be conserved. So let me use conservation of momentum. Um, so what I'm saying is that total momentum initially, all added together, is equal to total momentum finally, all added together. So total initial momentum, I'm just going to define leftward as positive, so I don't have unnecessary signs. Uh, I have momentum of the mass 2m, so uh, 2m times v naught, plus I have momentum of this ball, which is zero, it's not moving. It's equal to, they are both move, together moving to the left, and the mass of the thing that's moving together is 3m, and they're moving at some speed of v. Okay, I have one equation, one unknown, I think I can just solve for it. It's fairly simple. With the conservation laws, a lot of the questions, once you know what the right thing to do is, then the process of finding the answers is often fairly simple. So two thirds of v naught. Okay, so that is the speed of the this whole thing as it's a swinging up. So uh, I need to make sure to use this speed in this expression here. So just to quickly doing the Newton's second law thing, net force, uh, let me do this correctly. <laughs> the acceleration, 
the upward acceleration is going to be the net force in that upward direction divided by the total mass of the thing, 3m. So that's uh, uh, tension minus 3mg divided by 3m, and that's equal to this thing squared. So 4, 9, Boina squared over R. Did they give us a label for a uh, length L? Length of the string will be the radius of the circle. Length L. Okay, I think I can um, solve for tension. So th this is the equation I'm looking at. One equation, uh, one second equation, and one unknown tension there. So I think I can solve for tension there. Let me just do that in my head in the interest of time. You can double check. Tension is equal to uh, 12 m vina squared over 9 l plus 3 mg. So if the thing weren't moving, it would be 3 mg. But because it's moving, it needs to provide enough centripetal force. Uh, yeah, okay. So let me just write that in. T is equal to 12. Uh, times m times v not squared divided by, by the way, all this is, uh, when it is graded, it will be manually graded. So uh, as long as I can understand what you mean, it's fine. Like if you do something like this, I will usually understand that you meant to say uh, divide by nine times L. So even though your calculators might complain, I'm a human being, I can uh, guess, uh, <laughs> like I can do uh, a reasonable interpretation of things. Okay, uh, so that was A. Let me just label my work as I go so I don't have to do as much organizing later. I do recommend for you that um, you don't waste your time organizing during the 20 minute time limit. Again, it's a really tight amount of time. Uh, when the block and the clay swing up to the maximum height, the string makes an angle theta from vertical, right? Um, so it will have moved up somewhere here. Um, and it's describing this angle theta. Find this angle theta in terms of given quantities. Okay. Uh, so we have this picture at the bottom uh, where I have the thing that's moving at some speed, uh, moving at the speed two thirds, um, way not. So as you consider this picture, this is a swinging up. Um, again, I'm going to try to use conservation law strategy. It, that's the always the first thing I try because um, if it somehow doesn't work, it's easy to roll out. So I'm thinking through what's conserved as this swings up. Now, momentum won't be conserved because this tension is now significant external force along with the gravity. So momentum will be changing and you can see that it changes. But um, it looks like I don't have any non-conservative forces doing work. Tension is the only non-conservative force and it's perpendicular to the direction of motion. So I can say energy is conserved. So write the conservation of energy equation and work through that. So once you've identified energy is conserved, then the place you start from is the total initial energy is equal to total final energy. Oh, and you have to identify initial and final. This picture, one that I drew here, is my initial. And one here, where it's at the top of the motion with the zero speed, this is gonna be my final. So these are my two snapshots and I'm writing down my energy expressions for those two snapshots. And uh, let me set some convenient conventions. I'm going to say this height is my y equals zero, mainly so that my potential energy will be equal to zero here. That simplifies the first expression I will write down, the total initial energy. That's going to be the initial kinetic energy plus the initial potential energy, and this will be zero by the way I set up my thing. That's equal to the total final energy, so uh, final kinetic energy plus the final potential energy. And final kinetic energy, because of this, will be zero. And final potential energy, all right. It's going to have some gravitational potential energy. So let me write down those expressions. The initial kinetic energy will be one half mass, um, that speed, 
two-thirds of a knot squared. And the final potential energy, um, let me label it H for now, and I will develop an expression for that. That's going to be the mass times G times the height H here. So I'm looking at this height here. Uh, this drawing is becoming super uh, busy, so let me redraw it in a form where I can uh, understand better. So I have length L here. It's going to swing up to here. So this will be length L. And what I have labeled H there is this height here. So I hope uh, the way I'm drawing it, you see the right triangle. That's it here. So um, this being the right angle, that being theta. Oh, so the H, I think uh, looking at this uh, drawing, I can write H as uh, L, the length from here all the way down here, minus uh, this length, the adjacent side, minus L cosine theta. Um, or uh, L1 minus cosine theta. So plug that in there, that'll get me the expression. Uh, let me do a little bit of simplification as we go, because it's looking super complicated. Uh, oh, I can cancel 3M. I don't know why I keep carrying those. They cancel from both sides. <laughs> so I have um, 2 squared, 4 divided by 2, so 2 divided by 3 squared, 9. 3 naught squared is equal to g times h, which is L1 minus cosine theta. And they were asking for the angle theta. Oh, it looks like I can solve for cosine theta first, and then I can see um, how what kind of angle that gives me. So uh, solving for cosine of theta, again, just doing it in my head, just pause and double check <laughs> that I haven't made a mistake. So. It's going to be um, 1 minus uh, 2 v naught squared over 9 GL. I think that's right. <laughs> I divided by GL, move that over, move that over. Uh, uh, the 9 and GL is super, it's fine. Um, so, okay, I'm looking at this quantity. It's going to be less than 1, so that's good. Um, in fact, I think it's going to be an acute angle. Oh, if it's an if it's angle between 0 and 180 degrees, then I can just do arc cosine. So I think we are fine doing this. Theta is equal to arc cosine of 1 minus 2 v naught squared over 9 GL. And just a quick dimensional check. Uh, so this quantity should be unitless. And I have in, this is meter squared per second squared being divided by meters per second square, second square cancels out. I have meter left over, meter here, meter squared will cancel out, so you need to work out. Okay, so that's my answer for theta. Uh, theta is equal to arc cosine of 1 minus 2 v naught squared over 9 gl. Now, um, <laughs> this does make it harder for me to read, so I would appreciate doing something like this uh, to remove ambiguity where you can. But, you know, if someone put in what I initially put in, that still will be fine. I think uh, when the answer is clean enough, I can uh, read it well enough. Okay, I got seven minutes. So let's see here. Suppose that you give a little initial energy to clay ball by releasing it from a position with the left of vertical, your time releasing. Uh, how will this move? Um, so you have to go back and think about this collision. So the clay ball will be moving to the right as it collides. In that this collision, you just conserve the momentum. So if you are reducing um, the total initial magnitude, the total initial momentum, then that will actually end up reducing the magnitude, total final momentum, which will decrease its kinetic energy. So let me <laughs> spell it out. Um, this will decrease uh, theta. Um, because in the collision analyzed in, in A, uh, only momentum is conserved if uh, the mass M has right forward momentum. This reduces the magnitude of total initial and final momentum, uh, which reduces the kinetic energy, the combined 
Nas starts the upward swing with. Uh, I think that's enough, and I can spell it out more. But I only have five more minutes left, so let me make sure I have enough time here. Um, oh. Yeah, this should have left enough time for this part. You calculate tension, okay? Swing out, you found. Uh, so I give on you to. So I know the answer because I've worked it out before. <laughs> answer is a uh, uh, tension of the pendulum at the maximum height will be less, and I'm just gonna uh, work it out the remainder. Um, so. Yeah, sorry, I have a deja vu uh, of something. Um, and mixing up things. Uh, so, okay, let's just calculate the tension. So, uh, tension in a was uh, this. I'm just going to have it as reference uh, so that I have, um, when I, once I finish calculating tension here, I can see that uh, what my tension there is. So um, it looks like, so this part is a straightforward force analysis at the maximum angle uh, compared. So, uh, so let me just uh, have this thing set up. I have something with this angle theta, uh, mass 3m. So, and at this position, uh, let me draw the free body diagram. Uh, the free body diagram looks like mass 3mg, tension t. And the thing always will be the acceleration. That's the thing that um, you should always kind of clear through. And uh, just uh, thinking along these two axes, the radial axis and the tangential axis, I think in this direction, acceleration should be zero because the velocity is zero. You don't need a centripetal acceleration at this moment in time at the maximum height. So really the only acceleration you are dealing with is this acceleration, the tangential acceleration. Uh, that gives me the right uh, choice of axis to work with. I want to work with uh, the y and the x-axis. So, so with that, uh, I think I've done this breakdown of forces enough to have it just to memorize. Let me use that. I'm running out of time. This is 3mg cosine theta. This is 3mg sine theta, theta being this angle here. I think they look right. <laughs> um, so the, I think I only need to write down set of Newton's law equations for this in order to find tension. I actually don't care what this is. So let me write that down. The acceleration in the y component, which is equal to zero, is going to be the sum of forces, t minus 3mg cosine theta divided by um, divided by 3m. So my tension will be 3mg cosine theta. Oh, I think I worked out cosine theta before. I had it from up there. That was my cosine theta. So um, putting this in for cosine theta, I get tension is 3mg, 1 minus 2b naught squared over 9gl. And actually, I think even in a really simple comparison, um, this is definitely less. Because uh, when you look at this number from A, and compare this number from D, this is greater than 3mg. And this is less than 3mg. So on that comparison, uh, so detailed calculation shows T less than 3mg, while answer in A was uh, T greater than 3mg. So uh, I don't know, this is kind of an open-ended question, so I don't know how much of an answer you need to put in here. I think what's actually more important is the detailed work that you can complete outside of the 
time limit. Oh, well, I actually finished this in time. Okay, let me, uh, let me just to make sure I save progress and see if I can add the work in like less than a minute. Uh, be able to, uh, we'll see. This is the kind of thing that you shouldn't do it on a hurry, especially because the time limit doesn't apply for this portion of the thing. Sure, I ran out of time by now. Uh, I'm not sure why it hasn't kicked me out yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> did they say okay okay it didn't wipe out my work i've had um heard gotten reports of this happening though where um uh, people were saving their doing working on their work but close to the deadline and i guess when the the midnight deadline struck they got kicked out and the work that they're working on just disappeared so i do recommend that you don't um uh, work out your work here. Like this window is really just for unloading, pasting things. It's not for anything else. Like if the thing kicks you out and um, it somehow wipes your work that you type put in here, you should be able to easily copy it over again. Like that's, uh, that's always the intent. Yeah. All right, so I think uh, that's uh, the demo and I think I <laughs> covered this question enough. Um, yeah, I think I actually explained things along the way. This is, um, except for maybe part D, it's one of the easier questions. I think A, B, C, uh, it's uh, just checking you know how to handle um, collisions and other dynamics using conservation laws. It, it's uh, it's uh, the right kind of question for this class because it's the kind of question for people who haven't developed that Problem solving skill, it may be difficult, but once you get used to how to use conservation laws, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, other than maybe some algebraic error may have made. Uh, if you find errors, let me know so I can fix it or notice somehow. All right, so let me do the. Um, so let me do multiple choice questions just one more time. Last time I got flabbergasted and actually um one thing i wanted to check um brochure to do that oh that's interesting so because i use the lay pass um i test the student to can't see the answers until after this uh, uh, that's in, uh, interesting. <laughs> Sorry, I only see those impacts uh, when I'm in test the mode. So I, I guess that makes a sense. Um, I just want to check one thing, which is that um, I was confusing myself if I um, t typed in all the answer keys for these or not. I thought I didn't, but maybe I did. Uh, let me see. So I'm just going to bring up that question that I just did. Uh, I don't know what I called it. Um, I think I'm just going to have to. Ballistic pendulum, maybe. Um, I think it's one of the ballistic pendulum questions. OK, not this. <laughs> not this. <laughs> uh, maybe this. OK, it's this one. Okay, um, I guess I typed in the answers. Um, okay, so those of you who completed this by yesterday uh, and didn't use LayPass should have access to answer keys in a, like a key icon here. Same with the previous, um, um, same with the previous, the, uh, the timed assessment. Um, 